see all these um, dried pods on the hollyhock. So when you see that they turn brown, then they're at the end of their cycle. And that means that they bloomed and they are already um, ready to harvest. And so in these pods, you'll have the seeds. And let me just grab a couple more of these to show you. Oh, gosh. Um, there we go. Oh, you know what? And here, that was the red ones. And here's some more red ones. Uh, it's really hard to do with one hand. So let me show you. Um, and as you can see, a lot of the leaves have fallen. Let me show you how to harvest the seeds for hollyhock. So here are the radish seeds. Um, they, I just pulled out a chunk of the top where all the seeds are, and, I, and they're already dried and brown. So you have all these seed pods, and so I'm just going to pull off a bunch. Um, as a starter to make it less cumbersome to work with. And so just pull off a bunch. do is open up these seed pots. So here it is. Let me try to open it up. So this is, this is a little bit tougher to open because the fibrousness of the, the pods. So you get seeds like this. They're little brown specks. And um, you just collect them and you have a new crop for the following year and that's what we'll do is just keep collecting a ton of them so, so it's not it's not very difficult to open them it's just a little more difficult than just rubbing the um, brassica seeds and so in each pod you'll find anywhere between three to five or more little seeds in the seed pods or radishes oh this one has quite a few um, so right there there are three four right there and Let me try rubbing them. No, it's not, yeah, it's a little more fibrous than the brassica seeds, so it won't open up. It's got, it's got all these fibers in there, and it, it makes it, it holds on to the seeds a little better. But as soon as you open them up, then they're easy to, um, to obtain the seeds. So they just fall right out as soon as you open it up though. If it's not open, you can't get the seeds. So here are all the seeds. So that's how you harvest harvest um, harvest radish seeds. So they look like that little tan round um, seeds. Okay, next I'm going to show you some hollyhock. So this is how you collect hollyhock seeds. So here are, here it comes in a, a round shell, like so, and it's dried and brown. You want to wait till it's brown and dried. And you open up, it's almost like a little dim sum dumpling, you know, roll. Um, and wrap and uh, you open it up 
and there are a ton of seeds in here. So all this, it's not one piece. It's a bunch of little seeds. Do you see how many seeds there are? There are just a bunch of little seeds that are just skinny like that. And that's what we're getting. And we'll get so many more flowers next year. And they're a great addition to your garden because uh, bees and other pollinators love to feed on it and birds for the nectar and it is just wonderful so there are see there are so many seeds and this came off of just a these were just a few pods of seeds that came off of um, maybe four or five flowers stalks and I'm going to end up with so many flowers that I tend to give away and share my seed collection with friends and family and some neighbors. So um, you can do that with your garden. You can multiply. You can start with one pack of seeds for only 2 to $3. Sometimes even as cheap as a dollar. And... If you can get good seeds like open pollinated, um, organic, or uh, heirloom seeds, then you've got the best ones. And when you grow it in your property, you've acclimated your seeds to your area. So it'll grow really well amongst your neighbors and in your region. Um, and each year they get stronger and stronger. Um, so this is how you harvest hollyhock seeds. Next I'm going to show you how to collect um, cilantro seeds. So here we have a bunch of cilantro seeds and um, how you harvest it is these are the seeds and they're all dried up and brown. That's what you want to wait for at the end of the season. These are slow bolt cilantro, but I just, they grew so much that I didn't get to them and in time. So now it's the time, don't waste your money. Um, you can still get new plants from the seeds. So even though I didn't get to eat the cilantro um, 100%, I can still make more seeds and even have enough to share with others just by collecting the seeds. Just a little extra work and you get so much more in return. So here they are and I'm collecting them to place all over the yarn um, and to give away. And these also are hardy in my yard. This is the second year I've grown cilantro in my garden. And sometimes it's easy to just get a bunch of seeds from even the grocery store. So I started these seeds, not from a package of seeds. I started the, growing these from the cilantro seasoning um, um, from the grocery store and I just put it in the ground and it grew. Sometimes it doesn't work because they've heat treated or done something to the seeds but um, in certain cases they're all natural and so they don't fuss with the seeds and the spices and they're um, organic and you can grow from your seasoning aisle the seeds that will become whatever herb that you want. So that's how you do the different seeds that I have so far acquired. Thank you for watching. 
Hello, I'm going to share with you my seeds. Um, these are the seeds that I've collected over time from my yard, with the exception of this snowbird pea, which I have a duplicate of. Um, I, if I have duplicates, I uh, will give it to friends or family. And yesterday, I went through my seed box and pulled out some of my duplicates and other things so uh, so what happens is I collect a lot of seeds and I disperse it so I have a master um, seed stack that's mine really that's its name and these are to be dispersed to different people friends and family and this one is for my sister because she has a huge yard so um, I'll let her pick what she wants to grow where and um, I have boxes still of seeds that I, I need to go through so the other day I was sitting out here and I was enjoying um, my time just pulling the seeds out of the pods into a paper bag when all of a sudden I saw a bunch of birds, hummingbirds, and uh, other birds, I don't know their varieties or their names, and I was just so excited. Um, they were just swarming around, just flying here and there, landing on things, so, and I've been seeing several uh, hummingbirds. The other day I was watering um, the yard, and two, a pair of hummingbirds just flew up. One flew off right away, the other one hovered there for a few minutes um, staring at me and then it flew off too and it was just so, so nice. Then I saw about five little birds, um, the, the normal ones that you see flying around, and they just landed on various parts of my garden, on my trellis, on some plants. And then they uh, moved around a little bit and then they flew off and it was just so so nice I wish I had it on film but I did not um, so that's what's happening in my garden right now um, hope you could have such abundance in your yard as well have a great day Hello there. So here I have a sunflower head that I cut and I was saving it so that I could have um, some nice sunflowers to grow because it came, it was really large. It was a lot bigger than what it is here. And what happened was I set it, I cut it off and I put it in a paper bag and I was allowing it to dry out the seeds because if you put it wet into a container, it will start to mold and the it'll render the seeds useless so they cannot be they cannot grow the following year so I left it on the in my driveway and in a paper bag and it was supposed to dry out and the sunflowers were that were growing in my yard something was climbing up and breaking off the leaves and climbing all the way up to the top of my eight and ten feet tall sunflowers and we had no idea what it was whether it was a possum um, or squirrels whatever and and or birds and um, if the birds got to them that was fine because it was meant for the wildlife but 
not so aggressively as it was being eaten because almost all the seed heads were being eaten and come to find um, it was a squirrel and it was squirrels are climbing up these and they've made this year they've made sunflower their new favorite crop because uh, last year they didn't do that and in fact last year they spent most of their time eating my pomegranates and they did that to my pomegranates this year which now I know that the, the telltale sign is that they eat just a little bit like a bite out of something and then they take off or sometimes they'll spend a little more time eating it but so they ripped open the bag that was holding these sunflower heads so I've, I've already lost two sunflower heads and this one actually has a lot of it still so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna harvest the seeds now it's pretty dry now and I'm gonna put it into a container that they cannot open and some of it I will grow because I've decided if I grow these sunflowers that were meant for the wildlife, which the squirrels are included, they'll eat more of these seeds and these crops and possibly eat less of my pomegranates and other things. And these can grow, I mean, there are so many seeds and it can grow so many sunflowers and maybe they'll eat that instead of my pomegranate. So I'll keep you updated on my, um, my, whether this, this idea will work out. Thank you for watching.